heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Hello once again, I'm John Shannon. I'm an evangelist in the Church of Christ. Thank you again for watching this television program uh, straight from the sheet. Uh, we hope that you enjoy uh, these series of lessons from God's Word. If you would, get a pencil or a piece of paper, and get yourself relaxed, and let us begin studying uh, God's Word. Today we have another good lesson taken from the book of Matthew chapter 5, 13 through 16. We'll read that text together, and we'll let the text tailor the truth. In Matthew chapter 5, 13 through 16, our Lord says, Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savior, wherewith shall it be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of me. Ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it on a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Today our lesson is entitled, Who Are We? Do you know who you are? Who are we? We are children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Galatians 3, 26 and 27. Who are we and whose are we? Have you considered that? I remember a tour in Vietnam in 1967, 68. When we first got there, we thought it was like stateside duty. And the first night that we got hit, it was in December 67, and we were just confused and frustrated. And after the little mortar attack and rocket attack was over, the sergeant came to us and said, boys, now you know. Do you know who you are? And do you know why you're over here? This is not playing. This is for real. Well, do we know who we are as members of the body of Christ? Our Lord uh, told the apostles in this particular context about three or four things, and we're going to look at them. Let's run down this outline here. Hope that you can see it nicely. Uh, point number one, we talk about the salt that betters the world. That's verse 13 of chapter 5. Point number two, we look at the light that brightens the world. You see that? That's verse 14a. Point number three, the city that is beheld by the world. That's 14b. All right? Then, last but not least, the Christian as a beacon in the world. Chapter 5, 15, and 16. So, wa watch this. Salt Light, city, and a lighthouse, a beacon. You got it? We are children of light, salt, and we are in a world of darkness and we need to shine. I hope that's clear so far. So, that's workers. You got that? Light, that's the gospel of Christ. The word, you got it? 
And then you have the city, God's jewels. We are jewels of God there. And a lighthouse, and we should let our light shine in this world. Well, let's look at it. Salt. The worth of salt. Watch what Jesus said in the text. He says, ye are the salt of the earth. That's worth something. You see that? Uh, godly members of the Lord's church, please listen, are valuable and vital in the world. Brethren, do we know who we are? Do you know who you are? We are valuable and we're vital in this world in which we live. We shouldn't get ourselves entangled in the affairs of this life, but to please him who have chosen us to be soldiers, and that's Jesus Christ. Are you listening? Now, now we look at the work of salt. Salt. I remember the late brother Curtis Cates, a gentleman and a scholar, a friend of mine, made this statement in 1986 when I entered the Memphis School of Preaching. He said, brother, if you're worth your salt, somebody will call you. I never forgot that. Thank God for Curtis Cates. We appreciate his family and his lovely wife. Is that all right? If you're worth your salt, somebody will call you. If you're worth your salt, you can be used. Now, so the work of salt, it, it is, watch it, particular. Now, sugar may look like salt, but they're different. They're different. If you think salt is sugar, tell you what you do. If you're eating an ice cream cone, just sprinkle a little on it and you can tell the difference. So it's, it, it's, it's peculiar. Not only that, salt, watch it, it penetrates. Wait a minute. God's people are peculiar people. We are peculiar people. Peter talked about that. We're peculiar people. Watch it. Not only salt is peculiar, but it penetrates. What do you mean? Brethren, it's our job to penetrate the world, uh, 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 be penetrating in the world, watch it to care of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Salt that betters the world. We ought to make the world better. But, uh, oh, let me do this. We must live better than the world. Brother and I, I'll tell you what I, oh, I just love this. I'm glad I know who I am. I'm a child of God. I'm in Christ Jesus. I'm a saint, I'm a soldier, I'm a Christian. And Jesus described his people as salt. It penetrates, watch it. Uh, it prepares, oh, I like that. It prevents, wait a minute. It purifies and it preserves. Look at that. Look at this, salt. What do you mean? Watch it. It penetrates. As a boy in the country who used to take meat, swine meat, pork, hog meat, kill it, hang it up, let it cool out, and we take salt and put on the meat. What was the purpose of putting the salt? Well, the salt, you put it on the meat and it penetrates the meat, right? And it prepares it and it prevents it from spoiling. But you got to put it on in it in time. You can't put salt on meat and it's already rotten. It won't save it. Are you listening? Now, it purifies. What do you mean? Salt purifies. Well, it draws all of the, the, the blood and water out of the meat and it preserves it. It preserves it. It keeps it. Is that all right? And it preserves it. You look at Leviticus 2 and verse number uh, 13 there, and also Colossians 4, 5, and 6 there about uh, salt. Is that all right? 
Well, I think we need to turn to Leviticus quickly there. Leviticus chapter 2 and verse number 13. I think it would be good if we'll just turn there and look at Leviticus 2 and verse number 13. Is that all right? Let's look at it. That pretty good? At every oblation of the meat offering uh, shall thou season with salt. Neither shall thou suffer the salt to be uh, the, the uh, covenant of God to the lacking of uh, that meat offering. With all thy offerings uh, thou shalt offer salt. They use salt in Old Testament. Pretty good. Now we'll look at the book of Colossians. I want to get this out the way. I, this is good here about salt. Colossians chapter, I look at it there. Colossians chapter 4 and verse number 5 and 6. Let's look at there. Turn there. Lick your fingers there and turn there. Is that all right? Let's look at it. Uh -huh. but I, I, I like this. Look, look at verse 5 and 6. It says, walk in wisdom toward them that are without. See, this is Christians. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without. Without what? Without all the spiritual blessing. They're not children of God. And we need to walk in wisdom. We need to live better than the world. You got it? And then it says, uh, let your speech, look at it, be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know uh, how you ye ought to Answer every man. Salt. Let your speech be seasoned uh, uh, with salt. Is that all right? Seasoned with salt. Well, what happens when you put salt on food? It makes it taste better. You want it more. Got it? Some of you good people know what I mean. You may be in a hospital right now and wishing that you had some salt because of the food that you're eating. Doesn't it? But if you add a little salt to it, it enhances the flavor. And that's what we should do as God's people. We should, watch it, make the world a better place in which to live. Just imagine everybody in the, in the United States of America were Christian. I, I'm not talking about in denominational sense. I'm talking about in the Bible sense. We were Christian. Don't you know there would be a better place are you a better where you are, where you work and where you live? Are you better? Do you make things better? Well, let's go on. That, that's good, isn't it? Now, warnings for salt. Look what, it, look what Jesus said. But if the salt, look at it, have lost its saving, wherewith shall it be salt? See the warning? It's worth something. Watch it. It should be working, and there's a warning for us as God's people. Watch it. The worthlessness of soul. Watch it. It is this for good for nothing. Hmm. Good for nothing. As a member of the body of Christ, are you good for nothing? Are you worth something? Valuable and vital. Good for nothing. And then, oh, this is nice, isn't it? Worthless of salt. And then we have the walkway of salt. Look at what Jesus, how Jesus describes that. But to be cast out, this is worthlessness. Are you one of those individuals who are not doing anything in the church of our Lord? You know, the work of the church, evangelism, that's seeking and saving the laws. You know who we are? Edification, that's building up the saints, and benevolence for saints and sinners. Now, I got a question I want to ask you. You've been bragging how long you've been in the church of Christ. Now, my question is, I know that you're worshiping properly in the body of Christ on the first day of the week. You're probably doing everything absolutely perfect. But remember this, that Worship is not work. Now, evangelism, edification, benevolence, where are you working? Where 
Are you working? Hmm. You mean to tell me you've been in the church of Christ all these years and you're not a professional in one or all three of these particular places? Evangelism, seeking and saving the lost, edification, building up the saints, and benevolence for saints and sinners. And you mean to tell me you think you're going to heaven and you're not going to even work? The Bible says in Ephesians 2 and verse number 10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto every good work. That's good. All right, walk way of the sword. That's all right. How it's good for nothing but to be cast out and to trodden on the foot of me. Let me hasten on here. Uh, point number two, light that brings, uh, that uh, brightens the world. Look what Jesus said. Ye are the light of the world. Light shines in a dark place. We ought to shine in the world. Brethren, I think we have a big problem in the church of our Lord. We are trying to be conformed to this world instead of being transformed by the renewing of our minds. Listen here. We are in the world, but not of the world. We shouldn't live like the world lives. There's too much worldliness in the church of Christ. We got brethren walking around with all kinds of crazy earrings in the ears, tattoos all over the face. Got it? Women walking around looking like taxi girls. You say that you're a Christian. Look at the way you dress. Look at your speech. Listen at you. Are you listening? Now, I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with, I'm watching my brethren like I'm watching the Baptists. I believe we can take the world, we got the truth, but if we ever go to living it, we can take the world. I need to be nice. Some of you written in and said, John Shannon, just too rough of a raw preacher. Well, we need somebody to tell you when you're wrong. We need somebody. I'm watching you. I've got to number your house. I've got your telephone number. I'm working on you right now. Don't turn the TV off. You want me to jump on denominationalism and show how bad they are and how wrong they are. That's right. But look at us. A lot of members of the Church of Christ smoke cigarettes, run down the casino, gamble. A lot of them even whoop their wives, misuse their children. That's not a good example. And a lot of women curse. Yeah. Ephesians 2, I think it is, 428, let not corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Working on that. Oh, we got the attention now. Boys, I've got the attention. Well, pretty good. Watch this here. Light shines in a dark place. Light shines in a dangerous place. Dangerous places it shines. Is that all right? Light. Light. Paul said, we're light now. We're sometimes darkness, but children of light. Paul said in Acts 26, verse number 18, Paul said, uh, uh, Luke wrote, to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God, that they may have remission of sin. Turn your light on. Is your light on where you go? Turn your light on in home. Turn. It's dark out there in the world. Keep your lights on. Turn your lights on. Do you have your lights on? the lights of your life. How about, let it go a little further here. Hey Amen. Point number three, a city that is beheld by the world. Listen, <laughs> let, let me read this. L look what Jesus said here. A city that is set on a hill, watch it, cannot be hid. Oh, yeah, don't you think one time they're not watching us? Oh, yeah. Denominational people are watching us. They watch our children. They watch, listen, the church members. They watch the elders, the preachers. They're, they're watching us. They watch how we dress, 
how we behave. They're watching us. Folks are looking at us. You say you're a Christian in the body of Christ. People are what? We live in a glass house. They're looking at us. You, you know, I have to keep myself straight. I like what James said, whosoever looketh in the perfect law of liberty and continue to end. See that? I've got to watch my, I've got to monitor myself daily and see if I'm right. Are you checking yourself out? I need to be nice here. Who are we? Who are we? We're special people. We're God's jewels. And God expects us to conduct ourselves according to the truth. You got it? All right. That's good, isn't it? Now, well, they, they're, looking, they're looking at us. All right. Now what we have here. The Christian as a beacon in the world. So far we looked at salt that betters the world. Light that brightens the world. A city that is beheld by the world. Now we look, a Christian, look at that, as a beacon in the world. Notice what Jesus said in chapter 5, verse number 15. Neither do men light a candle, watch it, and put it on a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let's work on us a moment. Do we have the light on in the house of God? Well, what is the light? The light is God's word. David said, Psalm 119, I believe it is, in verse 105, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my pathway. And Paul said in 2 Corinthians, I believe it is for there, are the light of the glorious gospel of Christ. Now, is the light shining in your house? Is it shining among your children? What about your spouse? What about in the community? You know the children, the children of God in the church of Christ. Listen to me. If you have young teenagers, we need to best be the best children in the public school system. Who ever heard of children of God in the body of Christ who are in the public school system and you got to call the police on them? Whoopie do. What's happening? Got too much worldliness in us. All right. Look at this. The performance of a candle. I like this. Now, let's look at the purpose of a Christian. Look what Jesus said in verse 16. Jesus said, listen, let your light so shine before me that they may see your good works. What kind of good works? Brethren, can't get away from evangelism, seeking and saving the laws, edification, building up the saints, right? Now you preachers and elders in the churches of Christ, are you preparing men and women to do evangelism? Our edification, our benevolence. If not, why not? What is the purpose of evangelists, elders, and special servants in the church and teachers? It's to equip the saints to do work, to do ministry. In a church not doing that, just worshiping? Well, why do you have elders and deacons and, and preach? What, what are you doing? Our job is to train men and women to do works. What ministry are they doing? Look out among them and see what they're doing. And you members of the Church of Christ, you all demand your leadership to set up programs so you can learn how to work in the world. That's our job. Brethren, we're in a battle. We're in a fight. All this feuding and fussing and fighting among ourselves, that won't get it. Why well, the devil, he's having himself a time. So look at him fighting. Oh, no. We'll fight the devil and not the disciples. All right. Now, I, I like this latter part here. 
Matthew 5 and 15, Matthew talks about a bushel. You got it? Well, now watch this here. Neither do men light a candle and put it on a bushel. Well, what, is, what are you really talking about? Well, a bushel was used to measure stuff. You got it? For we have to be careful about materialism and we have to be careful about prosperity. Materialism or prosperity can keep the light of the gospel from shining. You want to do your business, right? You want to do your business, but you will uh, you do your business, but you won't mention the gospel. That's what he's talking about. Now let's look at Mark's record. Mark doesn't Mark, watch what Mark says in Mark 4 and verse 21. And he said unto them, is a cow bought to be put under, watch it, a bushel or on the bed? Look at that. Matthew says bushel. That has to do with business, making money. Some people rather make money than let the gospel shine. I'm watching you now. A uh, Mark says a bushel. Well, what is a bushel? Uh, that's pretty good. And not to be set on a candlestick. Watch this here. Laziness and pleasure keeps the light from the gospel from shining. Lazy people stay in their bed all the time. And they think about pleasure rather than uh, giving, uh, propagating the gospel of Christ. Are you listening? Let me go on here a little further here now. Well, Luke says, no man, when he has uh, lighted a candle, put it in a, what, secret place. Secret place. Neither on a bushel, but on a candlestick that, which, that they which are, are come in may see the light. Well, what in the world are you talking about? Talking about a basement. Some people want to keep the gospel hid. Matthew talks about a bushel, Mark talks about a bed, and Luke talks about a basement. What's the basement? That's the secret place where you put a light and nobody can see it. Brother, we got to let the gospel out. We need to propagate it. Thank God for television stations like this who are propagating the gospel of Christ. In order for a person to be saved, watch this here, they must hear the light of the glorious gospel of Christ. One must hear and believe uh, the faith. Acts 15 and 7. Hear how Christ died and was buried and rose again the third day. That all right? And that he bought one church in which all men can be saved. One must repent of their sins. Acts 17, 30. One must confess the name of Christ. Uh, Romans 10, 9 and 10. Matthew 10, 32. One must be baptized in water for the remission of sin and what must behave in the body of Christ. I hope that you've enjoyed this lesson. Thank you as always. Build my soul.